but when did you realize that not only were you recognizable, but oh my gosh, we're really onto something here. This is this is this is bigger than just a successful morning show. I, it, yeah, I think it was in it was it was within the first year. I mean, I think it really caught fire. We had some like kick-ass interviews. I mean, Joe Walsh and um, Glenn Fry flew in yeah. to do our show, um, completely without awesome. sleep and possibly inebriated. Inebriated. I mean, John Mellencamp did our show, so you know that kind of stuff brings people in to listen and then they're hooked. And I guess, I don't know, it was probably within the first year. I can, I kind of go by what building we were in at the time. And we were in uh, that building in Southfield and uh, yeah, it, it was pretty early in the game, but it, it has so many, it evolved in so many different ways after that too. So just never stopped growing. I have to ask you this, and you know, you could tell me to pound sand, and maybe it's a secret if you if you don't want to tell me. But I've always wondered how you guys, and, and I'm sure it was probably Drew, but who knows? It could have been a producer, or it could have been yourself. How did you guys get the phone numbers of these hotels that these celebrities were in? And there was countless ones that you guys would cold call somebody, and then say you guys were supposed to have a meeting, and it's just you're lying to these people. And and how did you was was it did that come from the listeners, or how did you guys go ahead? Oh, like John Madden? <laughs> yeah, John Madden. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you could just look those up. It's it's just a you know phone call to information. And um, it was kind of before computers were super yeah. effective. But you just called information, got the hotel, and then and then called the front desk. And, wow. you know, the, the art of it is in bluffing your way through. Yes. And it worked. It doesn't so much anymore. They're kind of yeah. onto it. But yeah. Yeah, it's getting yeah. like when you turn into some of these morning shows and they're doing, you know, like stuff that Dick Purton used to do with the, with the, I mean, I still listen to that Porsche call. Have you ever, you've heard that one, haven't you? The Porsche call. That's oh, the, well, that's the put on call that really made him famous. I'd check that out if I were you, but no, um, I don't want to get right. off topic because I will, you and I could go off on a tangent, but I want to ask you because we've talked <laughs> about the Harris poll, bell for blows, cold call celebrities. Do you have a favorite uh, bit or, a, you know, a, a favorite reoccurring theme that you guys, that was just you just had a ball doing. I mean, I'm sure they were all fun, but you have one that uh, you look back with more fondness than the others. Um, I mean, they did a lot more of the bits, you know, and I, I kind of came in and, and, uh, you know, like was in the middle of it. Um, but I, I have to think, you know, like the, uh, we're on the air one day and, um, I think, Somebody in either news, the newspaper or somebody accused us of being um, radio for people who don't have jobs. So <laughs> so this was just, you know, it wasn't even a bit that was intended. It just came. It springs out of somebody making that sort of insult and drew going on the air and asking people, you know, like, uh, you know, what's your job? Give us a call. And then we ended up having all kinds of people call in. And they're like, you know, I work at such and such hospital and I listen to you guys. And the phone calls were were hilarious. They were great. And I think the audience interaction was part of my favorite part, because, again, that was completely unscripted, organic. You know, it just happened. 